the time has come for my people to go. I'm not a queen, I'm a servant of the people. I'm not a king, I'm a servant of the people. It's what the people demand, and we're going to keep fighting till we get that land. I'm not a queen, I'm a servant of the people. I'm not a king, I'm a servant of the people. It's time to rise to get what we want, we got to organize. Good day, good evening, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are in the world, good people, good comrades. This is the Pantsilla podcast, and there are several of us here today. <laughs> and Sadiq had to leave, and I'm sure you will see him again pretty soon. But uh, I am Jamila, and I'm here with comrades Jesse and Evan, and we are here continuing the celebration of the Pantsilla podcast anniversary. So we have the members of the Kaji Circle here with Jared Ball, who was in our first ever episode aired on January 11th. So <laughs> we're celebrating it. And I actually am wearing the hoodie. Uh, I'm wearing this because you, Jared, the hoodie that was in the first episode. <laughs> oh, wow. Right, right. Cream so, with the money. <laughs> so we're all here celebrating that we did an episode that was aired last week, sort of looking at uh, the highlights over the year. And now we're really gearing into uh, the first going into the second. And we wanted to share that with you, Jared. So before we do that, we want to note that the All African People's Revolutionary Party, which we are all a part of, and we want to discuss that with you, Jared. <laughs> So uh, we all organized with the All African People's Revolutionary Party, and the objective of the All African People's Revolutionary Party is to have scientific socialism, and that is a unified socialist Africa under scientific socialism. And of course, that is a transitory period to move into world communism. And if you have any questions around that, uh, we are here, we are available, you can ask us. It seems like a lot of people who are connecting with us and listening and watching us are joining organizations and we're, we're very pleased about that because uh, as I keep mentioning, that is a present I would love to have is that everyone joins a revolutionary organization. <laughs> so it looks like that is happening, yay. So, oh my goodness. So before we get into it, we also want to honor our ancestors. We do that each week. Uh, we acknowledge that we are on stolen land and across the world there are ancestors whose shoulders we stand on and that is who we love to honor before we even get into each episode. So Evan is going to get into that. All right, so for this for this week's episode, we're going to honor two ancestors. Uh, one, the recent, uh, recent ancestor, uh, Russell Maroon Schultz, and we're also going to honor uh, Jean-Martin Jean Martin, Jean Cisse. Uh, so Russ Maroon Schultz, as you may know, was a longtime time political president. He was a member of the of Black Panther Party, part of the Black Liberation Army, and was up for decades until we were to liberate him uh, in, in October, I believe. And then finally, of course, uh, uh, he transitioned to the ancestors uh, two months later uh, after some uh, cancer. And also like to honor and uh, John McNancy say, who was a member of the of the PBG in in Guinea, and she also was the first uh, woman who first woman who served as president of the UN Security Council. She was also a, um, a trade unionist, also did a lot of work for the Pan African Women's Movement during the anti-colonial era, as well as was a member of the Politburo of of the Democratic Party of Guinea. So we want take a moment to honor both of them for their contributions on both, both as above ground and underground, as well as, uh, as, well as those who are locked up and those who are able to engage with and understanding how, regardless of where you stand, that this Pan-African struggle is is something that should be in the forefront for any, any African organizing. Absolutely, absolutely. Jared, how are you? I'm as good as could be expected, and and I uh, and I'm honored to be uh, to be back, and congratulations on the anniversary. Thank you. I think the last time 
Uh, we checked in on the show. Um, I had two legs. Now I currently don't. So uh, if you don't know, I got uh, run over by a truck and I got a leg amputation. What? Yeah. Oh, you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't know. I'm yeah. I'm very sorry to hear that. That's, that's I had... I'm alive. We're all here. So that's, but that, that's a little update that happened over the year. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm definitely glad you're still here, uh, but uh, I, I'm shocked. I'm sorry to hear that. That, 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 oh, that no. just an incredible thing to have to overcome. So congratulations on that as well. <laughs> but uh, what we want to know is since you've decided to organize with the AAPRP, I know you mentioned it in the episode you said yeah okay i'm gonna i'm gonna and you actually did do it so how was that process and what are some things that have transformed you either ideologically or emotionally or other ways uh, well is is it's been great as far as transformation though i wouldn't say there's been any i mean i um uh so far you know I'm, i mean i'm still going through the you know, I'm, I'm thinking almost 20 years ago now, I made sort of a initial passing, you know, um, uh, I don't know, initial, um, you know, pass through with the AAPRP, but I never did anything officially. Uh, and so just, you know, actually going through the process now uh, and doing my work study circle and all of that. And so I'm still doing that. And uh, I love it. Um, but, uh, there's been no change. I mean, everything so far that we're reading is, is, you know, uh, is something that I've read before. So it's good to read it again. It's good to read it with people who are reading it more fresh, more freshly. And I think who are, are um, uh, and reading a lot more at this point than I am. So it's good to do that and to build with people. Cause and then, you know, there's also, you know, reading and then they're studying, uh, and they're not the same. So there are some things I may have read, but I haven't worked through them co with a collective of people reading it with me uh, and with different, you know, areas of expertise and experience. Um, but uh, uh, so that's, even, you know, that's great. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's been fantastic, you know, and I have one still more going question. strong. I have one more question for someone else jumps in. In terms of a nation class gender analysis has there been any shifts because that's a major factor in an ideological struggle we have in general but with your personal journey and organizing with the aaprp has there been any shifts in how you view a nation class gender gender analysis i don't think so uh and i i you know i, I mean there's Again, not a shift or a change. Maybe there are, um, there's certainly language. I mean, I remember we were reading um, uh, uh, Sekou Touré. And uh, I mean, you know, so, there's, you know, there's still that that old language with the pronouns and things like that, that are immediately, you know, they stand out, you know, <laughs> they <laughs> glaringly in today's reading. Uh, but, but it, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think that's so much of a change as it is that, uh, um, uh, 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 you know, an expansion of the language, you know, uh, and be more considerate with the language perhaps and what pronouns mean. Cause obviously I don't think anybody would argue to meant to be patriarchal when he said him all the time or man all the time. Uh, but uh, it's certainly worth, uh, you know, updating and, and reflecting on. So I don't know about a change as much as, um, uh, you know, maybe just trying to, to, to learn more about how to make the analysis uh, resonate today. Uh, and that does require, you know, a, a reconsideration, not of only of the language, but what it means to be uh, of a different gender or sexual orientation. Uh, and I think that, uh, uh, you know, obviously this has been part, you know, been part of the struggle for a long time. And I don't think it's, it's necessarily new to be considering that to, it, today, but, um, uh, um, uh, but there's definitely been a lot more done uh, since a lot of these writings were, were written, you know, so, uh, but yeah, not so much a change, but just a, an adjustment and, you know, expansion. I was thinking I recently had a conversation with a friend of mine who was talking about AI and he was introducing me to this new program that had this development to just create 
sentences and just a whole story basically and of mm. course i was just thinking of it from a capitalist perspective because i understand technology is used to fuel that type of oppression and i wanted to just know some of your thoughts on how ai potentially has that capacity we know with social media they gather our information and they can learn all this stuff about us which gives us that ability to go back into the system and just rely on that relationship and so yeah i just kind of wanted to know some of your thoughts on what that you know i haven't I, it's a great question i haven't thought that much specifically about artificial intelligence um but uh, whenever I do, uh, you know, I think two things, at least one, I should pay more attention and two, it's spooky to me because I, I tend to think it's only going to make existing social relationships worse uh, and, and exacerbate the ability, uh, you know, for them to do what they're doing. Uh, so, you know, all the things. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. 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 That, I mean, that, that's, that's basically it though. I mean, and then when I'm, and then, and then, uh, you know, when I, uh, you know, with the, like the, the deep fake video and all that kind of stuff, I mean, you know, uh, man, uh, right. I mean, this is something new for yeah. me too. It's like, I don't know a lot about it, but when he was telling me about it, I'm like, this could go potentially, I could see capitalism using this, of course, as a way to oh. further that oppression. It's not going to be, it's that's, it's views like that right now. Oh. Really, I'm sure. Oh no, no. I mean, I mean, already we know, and and again, I mean, I'm, 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 I, 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 I'm really conflicted, and and I am uh, uh, in in an immediate contradiction with 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 social media, but um, you know, they they take our, you know, they're taking pictures that we post and using that to to perfect the technology. They're selling it, you know. All of that has only gotten more intense, uh, uh, certainly over this past year. Uh, and they're selling it to people we don't, you know, to, that, that we don't know, and we don't know what they're doing with it. Uh, but they're using. But what is known, at least, is that the technology is 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 being used used to aid surveillance uh, and artificial reproduction of people. Uh, and then, you know, what I have been looking at a little more is is you know, like Zuckerberg's Metaverse, and now Snoop has a Snoop Verse that he wants mm -hmm. to in incorporate within that. You know, when we're all walking around with 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 our, our freely handed out virtual headsets that I, I you know I can predict them handing out at, at grocery stores or wherever people end up you know passing through, they're just going to get one. Uh, it's it's going to make it you know it's going to look very real. It's going to sound very real, uh, but it's 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 going to make it harder for us to to maintain the relationships to materialism that I think we have to, you know, and I'm, I'm being, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, punning here a little bit, but, but, you know, we have to maintain a relationship to materialism, uh, to the material world, if we're going to, if we're going to fix it. And if we're all plugged in and, you know, looking at perfected versions of ourselves, uh. you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> while, while the, why everything around us is collapsing. I mean, I think that, you know, I, I, anyway, I just see it. I, I, that's where I see them attempting to, to drag us, you know, stop yeah. looking outside because we're not going to fix the air. We're not going to fix the water. We're not going to fix the food. We're not going to give you real jobs. We're not going to give you health care. So, you know, beyond the video game now, you know, plug your whole life in. Yeah and uh uh and then try to you know and then try to do aaprp work in in mark zuckerberg's metaverse mall you, mean, <laughs> you see a, a group of avatars in the corner with red black and green talking about did you read your kwame oh, Nkrumah no. today <laughs> i mean I, uh, but i mean i think that i mean they're definitely trying to make it so that's going to be you know I can see where we're all conflicted and saying, are we going to have to organize there? Is that where, is that the only way to reach anybody, even if they're literally sitting right there? I mean, I don't know. Spooky though. Yeah, that's spooky. Thank you. That was a, I mean, that, I, that was the potential uh, inclinations I was having towards it. Like people are so plugged in. Of course it made me think of the matrix and just the idea of being plugged in always having the attachment of something, not really understanding the material reality around you, which you got to correspond to, because if that's not being addressed, if the land is not being addressed, the resources are going to be exploited and that continuation is going to just. And didn't they have to do that? I mean, they had to go back in, even in this new one, they got to go back in to do the work. 
because they can't work out in the in the, right. the battery fields or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, they have to go back in every you know, they uh, 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 and even Jada Pinkett's character said, I don't want to help them. Right. I'm only helping those of us who made it to Wakanda or whatever they're calling it now. You know, like they're like if you can make it here, maybe. But yeah. I'm not going back in there. It's too dangerous. We got it. They, they're on their own. They're lost. That was, I mean, if I remember correctly, that's what she yeah, said. They're she lost. Did. They're we lost. can't go back yeah. in there. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's, you know, obviously, you know, it's dangerous when you start looking too closely at movies for to explain reality. But there are definitely parallels. <laughs> hey, think, think, think about how, like, how, how many movies ha- have the existence of intelligence agencies of military and, and of course they're large capitalist organizations themselves so of course of course like their like their ideas of what what they want is going to seep out into the propaganda they put in the movie oh, so. yeah. not just seep out it's going to be baked in yeah and wait till top gun comes out this year Top Gun 2. Wait till that comes out. Boy, I can't wait for that. That level of propaganda, boy, with the new jets and the new technology. I can't wait. Wait, there, there's a Top Gun 2 coming out? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's already done. I mean, they're already promoting it. I think they're just waiting for whatever right moment. I mean, Tom Cruise and them already did it. Like, uh, they, you uh, know, and and again, I, you know, I joke all the time when I, when I, got conscripted you know through the poverty draft into the navy they called me the top gun troops i remember when i got to my ship because that because that movie had come out recently uh um and it did have an impact i'm not going to front i got my i got my aviator jacket and with my patches on it and at the time you didn't have to have a helmet to ride a motorcycle and i had my shades on you know what i mean i was in shape had the guns out you know what i mean on the bike <laughs> rocket you know what i mean with the with the jet, you know, I, you know, I was doing all of that. I, I mean, so I'm not, you know, I, it, it would be foolish to suggest that people aren't in, impacted by that. You know, you're 18, 17, 18 years old, you see people flying in jets and they're killing the bad guys and all this other stuff. You're like, yeah, that's hot. Right. That's why the, crew, show the recruiters come at middle school. They come early. Right. And then you show up and then you come to find out you, you, then you get, you get to the aircraft carrier and you're literally handed a toothbrush and told to get on your hands and knees and scrub the corner of the toilet, you know, that you can't use. That was always my favorite. Clean the toilet of the officers that you cannot use. That was, yeah, that's when I got in trouble again. I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Put me, put me, I'll do dishes. (laughs) I'm not clean. It's like, if I can't. (laughs) anyway i always need my version of oppression to be a little bit more removed i need a few le- you know levels of distance that was too close you know right. anyway but yeah anyway but that's the point that's right that's right they show up at the poorest uh schools the blackest and the brownest of the schools and tell everybody this is your pathway you know and for many it is i mean it's that's the only thing they can legitimately see is as a, as a pathway out and not just that, it trains you to be okay with a particular type of hierarchical structure that mm-hmm. there always be these people to dehumanize you and that's okay. And you internalize yeah. that and in many cases uh, enact that onto other people you deem weaker than you. And so there is definitely a gendered structure to that. I remember I think I've talked about this before on this podcast, but uh, I remember when Dead Presidents came out, I went to see that with a friend and there was the scene where the man um, physically assaults his wife and she is pregnant and she says, well, why are you going, the the whole thing, why don't you go get a job when he hits her? And I remember people cheering and it just put me in a bad mood for the rest of the movie. I hated the movie. You're saying they were cheering him beating her? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The people in the audience were cheering because she shouldn't be opening her mouth like that. And she needs to understand that he's stressed out and totally defending him assaulting his wife because he's stressed out. And just the dehumanization that uh, people who came back from Vietnam felt. And so people were feeling that, but it 
became okay for him to take that out on his wife. And I just, that just sat with me. And I just, I can't watch that movie to this day because of that. I haven't seen it since. And so- I haven't seen it in a long time. I can't, (laughs) but but, uh, yeah. It definitely (laughs) teaches you that it's okay to dehumanize someone you deem weaker because that's that structure in the military. And that's the structure you see in cinema and that's the structure that's okay. If you're president, it's okay. And even with what's going on with this current administration, well, y'all need to figure out this COVID thing yourself. We can't really do much about it structurally. So it's just like, y'all are weaker than we are. Like we have the tools, but we don't want to utilize that on y'all because you are weaker. So it's just Mm. structure. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, no question. Absolutely. Yeah. Going back to the one thing from what Jamil asked earlier, as far as your yeah, analysis of the nation class gender analysis, uh, has have you looked back at some of some of your previous works uh, or your previous talks? And you think, ooh, like yeah, I probably should have done a little better on this. I'm sure, take a little more. I like to go look at something. Like what 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 moments uh, did that come about? As far as I mean, for me, I don't think I, I, for me, I haven't. I mean, maybe I should, but I, I it hasn't I haven't felt a cause to to, to do that. Um, if uh, anything, you know, particularly with with uh, I mean, I've only written two single author books and and uh, with the first one, the only thing I thought that I, I well, there's several things I would have liked to have done better with the book. But in terms of. Um, a sort of correct politics or an improved politics. The only thing I would have wanted to do more was is was reference more political prisoners, since I was you know claiming to talk about them so much and 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 want to support them. I would have liked to re- reference more of their work. Um, I, I you know so I I mean um, the the I, I mean I suppose. Well, I would say it this way. I mean, I, there's there's plenty of of gaps in my work, both in terms of of academic and media production. Um, but I would think that, um, and I think, well, I mean, I think you know, I haven't done anything that, or or very little that focuses specifically on uh, um, gender or sexuality. Uh, but in terms of Yeah, but I, I don't know. I, even as I say that, I don't feel that I have. Uh, but I don't feel like looking back on my work that that is is some sort of. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like it's it's a flaw in as much as it's something that um, I could probably you know do more, you know, think more about and you know put more to the fore as I go forward now. But. Um, um, yeah, so I don't know if that makes sense, but but uh, uh, that is, I mean, that is, I hadn't really thought about it till just now, but that is how I feel, uh, you know. Yeah, that, that makes total sense in that when we're doing a criticism, self-criticism process, the point is not to say, well, I did this and this is horrible and we just mm-hmm. need to scrap everything. It is a journey. So to say, hey, I, I think using the word gaps is probably the best word to say, hey, here were some gaps in my analysis that doesn't mean that it was this horrible thing, but we can move forward. So like, say, here are things we can do better. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, but like, so for instance, I'm just trying to think now that you got me thinking about it, like, you know, so, so again, I've only done two single authored books. And the first one, um, was was attempting to make the point about the national colonial or inter- internal colonial relationship to this society uh, in the context of that particular project and and you know and and specifically the role that uh, the mixtape and emancipatory journalism and and you know could play you know like I don't think in the context of that work a specific focus on gender or sexuality or was necessary. Um, I don't think it, it, so I don't know, maybe, maybe that's just entirely wrong, but I, it just, you know, if, if, if the, if the point is in a limited space to, to make the national question argument, so to speak, 
um, without looking at the internal dynamics of the nation per se, but its its relationship to the the, the metropole or the mother country. Um, then, then I don't really feel like what I did was was lacking in terms of of uh, those areas of focus. Uh, it was lacking in some other areas, you know, to, you know, organization, writing. You know, I mean, there's the other flaws, but you know. Uh, and then similarly with the buying power argument, it's kind of the same thing. I'm not. I'm I'm looking at what is being said and done to the black community as a whole, and and. Um, now that said, it's funny you you said that just the other day uh, I uh, was was covering a story, uh, or just talking, you know, going into it on on my uh, my show about uh, the claims of of LGBT plus buying power, uh, and noting that the same arguments were being made and literally being compared to black people uh, about that community, broadly speaking, with the race question not being involved, um, to make the same claim almost that, that LGBT plus community problems of abuse and inequality could be solved by the development of a, of a, of a cryptocurrency coin and a redeployment of their buying power. And I'm like, wow. Uh, so in other words, as, as that work in terms of my look at, look at buying power or black capitalism more broadly, uh, you know, I can see very easily being able to focus on and be more uh, uh, specifically f uh, inclusive of those, c c the, the relationship or the, the way that uh, this issue is is imposed on that community as well. Um, but anyway, but but in terms of the work that yeah, so I I don't know. Like I said, I, you know, the, the what was not in there, I don't necessarily feel uh, is 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 you know, yeah. Anyway, um, but absolutely, I get the point. You know, and and I and I appreciate the reference to the to the process of the self criticism. Uh, and the point of it, uh, particularly within the AAPRP, is not, you know, to be abusive. But uh, um, anyway, I don't know. I don't know if I, you know, if I, if I was very clear there. But um, anyway, you know. Yeah. So this actually gets to another question I have, and we'll probably get to a specific episode on this. But recently, the uh, new governor of New York, Kathy Hochul. So yeah. she uh, signed a series of measures which are meant to deal with racism, discrimination, et cetera. And can, she's declared racism a public health crisis. And so <laughs> looking at what you're saying and addressing the buying power, it's easy to look at that in a very similar way because you can't eliminate racism without eliminating cap capitalism. So proposing a ton of measures and bills into laws, whatever, if you do not deal with the issue, the, the very foundation of the issue, which is at the root of racism, how can you eliminate the problem? So I'm mm -hmm. interested in your take on that. Well, I, I, th th honestly, this is the first I'm hearing this particular issue, uh, so I, I'm I'm behind on this 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 story. But it sounds very similar to uh, uh, what I know I have been focused on, sort of broadly speaking, uh, uh, more so even since the, this uh, this pandemic, which is that um, issues confronting us constantly can be brought up and discussed more so than ever. I think. But the way they're brought up and discussed is often very reactionary and, and left at a symbolic level. So again, I keep thinking of the, that picture, which is still my favorite, of Jamie Dimon, the head of J.P. Morgan Bank, taking a knee in front of his vault to commemorate George Floyd. I mean, to me, it's, that's better than the kente cloth on Nancy Pelosi and all of them. I mean, it's 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 he he it it, it was the it it was the most. I don't know, sort of, sort of, I think, accidentally overt statements 
from the ruling elite to say, I'm not opening these vaults. I'm not redistributing a damn thing downwards, at least. We're going to redistribute plenty upwards. But I'll get on a knee. I mean, I'll tell, you know, we'll take a knee. I don't care. I mean, I'll, you know, I'll say George Floyd's name. I mean, I'll, you know, I'm, I, I don't care. Um, and some people maybe will feel good about that. Uh, and this sounds very similar. Of course, I mean, you know, if, if, I, again, I'm, I'm going off of, of, of this initial hearing of it, but, you know, if, 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 if the governor is saying, uh, as others have argued in, in a variety of different ways, actually, economically and elsewhere, uh, you know, that, that the abuse of Black people hurts the entire country, uh, even venture capitalists from their own selfish perspective have noted this um, and even have said, look, if we give everybody health care, Black businesses will do better and it will produce more people that can uh, advance the economy because they'll be, they'll get paid more and they'll, all they're going to do is shop more. Um, and they'll be less likely to rebel. So, so, uh, uh, but at the same time, the, the power of propaganda and, and message manipulation, et cetera, is such that I think that they feel still, and we haven't made them, I think, feel enough the other otherwise, that they can do this kind of symbolic stuff and they can say something that sounds pretty tough. Some of them will even say things like reparations or or you know, they'll they'll make some allusion to to um uh something that's redistributive or 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 something. Um, or they'll say, yeah, black suffering is a national health crisis. We need a war on racism you know um and then you say all right well that sounds good but <laughs> you know uh how does that help me with my health care bill or how does that you know keep me in my home or how does that keep me in my job or how does that get me paid a, a livable wage um I don't know. And then, and then I, you know, then it gets all, you know, confusing and quiet and, and they go make a speech somewhere else. So I don't, you know, but again, I, you know, somebody asked me the other day uh, uh, about uh, what's his name, the mayor, the new mayor, um, what's his name? Yeah. I want to say Eric, uh, Adams. Eric Adams. Adams. That's right. And they, they played a clip and they were saying, well, what do you think, what would you say to him if you, you could talk to him? And I would say, I'm saying, I don't want to talk to him. Uh, and I was, you know, and I, and I remember hearing this from, from Ward Churchill uh, when he was speaking somewhere years ago, and he said, this whole thing of speaking truth to power is nonsense. We sh the, the powerful are not listening. They don't care. We should be speaking truth to each other and encouraging each other to move and organize and build to make whatever they're saying and doing moot. I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to talk to her, at least, the, the governor, at least not yet. You know, we're not part of it. We haven't organized our response yet. Uh, uh, at that point, you know, we could talk to whoever. But but until then, I'm not I don't want to talk to any of these people. I don't want to hear what they have to say. You know, what I mean, I, I mean, we obviously have to for analysis and understanding what well, we need to know what they're doing and saying to the extent possible. But in terms of, you know, uh, I want to 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 uh, help us inspire each other to organize them out of the way, you know. <laughs> so anyway, I. I like to say speaking truth to assumed power because it's okay. ultimately the masses who have the power in whatever system. And I'm gonna keep saying this, even in capitalism, the masses have the power. Like all of these people who are leaving their jobs in mass, imagine if every single worker did that, you would mm. see the system crumble so much faster. So it's built up where we look at this system as being natural. The people are, well, mm -hmm. capitalism just happens everywhere. And it is the masses who ultimately have the power. So that, that is why I do like to say assume power because of that. That works. Also, this, is my, this is my first time hearing about the whole uh, Jamie Dimon doing a knee on the ball. Yeah, I've never heard of that either. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to, <laughs> whenever you get a chance or even now, just Google it. I mean, it's it's such a stark, I mean, it's, it's it's. I, I love it. I, I, you know, somebody was asking me about this uh, um, 
uh, my man, you know, uh, uh, Davey D, the, the legendary hip hop journalist, for anybody who doesn't know, and, and the DJs also, and he said he did a new mix and he was sort of collecting all of the, that kind of stuff, you know, and I sent him that picture. I said, this is my favorite. You know, this is, this is my, this is, this is the one, uh, you know, I mean, I, I mean, it it, it it reminded me of the rich white version of like Floyd Mayweather when he's sitting on his stacks of money, throwing money at the camera, you know, like, like, this is my help for you show you how rich I am. You know what I mean? Like, this is, this is how I help the community. <laughs> you know, I get rich like this and I throw money like that was him, you know, and, and, but, but he's so wealthy. He can't, I mean, he couldn't, there's not enough of, you know, the, the, there's not, a, he does, he's not big enough to hold all of that money and throw it at the camera. So he just gets in front of his vault, you know, one of his vaults. He's like, you know what I mean? I'll get on a knee in front of this right here. You know, it was like this, it, 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 you, you, you know, you, you know, on one level, you might want to say he's just tone deaf. He can't, you know, he can't help it. On another, I just like, man, uh, he's shady, man. That's the CEO of JP Morgan. You know what I mean? He knows what he's doing. And he said, look at me right here. You ain't never getting nowhere near this right here. But I'll get on a knee because it doesn't cost me a penny. Not a penny. Um, anyway, I, I yeah, that's my favorite. That's still my favorite by far. Uh, it's like that, the end of Black Panther when people thought, oh, OK, I'm going to create a community center for these poor kids in the hood. Right. <laughs> Same he thing. flew down, right? Yeah, flew and the down. little brother says, what is that, a Bugatti? <laughs> right? He says, and, and all you get is an art center. An art I think, center. I think I literally, like, yeah. I think I literally, like, let out a noise when, when that happened. The first I know time I, I did. Saw it. I know like, I did. Are you serious? I said, no. Like, like, you're not even making me work hard to hate on this thing. You know what I mean? Like, that is so blatant. That's like, you're right. It's like the Jamie Dimon thing. It's so blatant. It's like a smack in the face. Like, that's it. Here's your revolution. An yeah, art okay. center. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think you of... Know, paintbrush. <laughs> I'm trying to think of if, if, if David Rockefeller were still alive, if, if, like him, like he's 104-year-old, but like going from like, <laughs> something like, yes, I, I care for Black Lives. Yeah. Yeah, but that I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, what was the other one? I was just going. Oh, what was I? Uh, oh, it. Oh, it just. It just. There was another one like that. Uh, it'll come back. It, it just let. It just slipped my mind. Anyway, it'll hopefully it'll come back. But but yeah, there's 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 too much of this. There's too much of this kind of stuff. We're just gonna we're gonna we're just gonna symbolically. You know. I don't know. It's crazy. Oh, that's what it was. My other favorite one that I learned about this year was the the CEO of BlackRock, the 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 venture capitalist fund that owns everything. He he told either he either he said it this year or I just heard he that he it was reported to in in that I saw it this year. But, but recently, in recent years, he has told um, people who want his investment money, which is everybody that that uh and i gotta go back and get the the name of it they created a a a, a, a score like a a metric to 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 um rate companies uh, uh social justice presentation so he told them if you don't have, you know, environmental justice or LGBTQ justice or Black Lives Matter, if you don't have that kind of language, you're not going to get my money. Now, and 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 the way it was phrased, it was, it, I mean, he was, he was, he was. It's like he's not saying do anything about these issues. He's just saying your 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 forward front, your your forward facing. Uh, um, you know, logo and, and website and your 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 symbolism, your your messaging, your public relations package has to have a, you know, you have to be talking about what you're doing for the the environment. And you know, you have to, we hired black people and we we have a trans CEO or you know, we got, you know, like you have to do you, you have to and then you can get his money. Cause he was saying I got too much backlash. Even even BlackRock was getting called out for not being, you know, good enough so that was his response like i'm not we're not going to change <laughs> we're definitely not going to redistribute 
because uh, nobody's making me. All they want me to do is say, you know, I'll put a, you know, a Black Lives Matter thing on on my storefront. You know? Yeah, that accelerated in massive leaps. Um, because I live in Minneapolis currently, and when George Floyd, yeah, when that happened, it was like all the businesses went straight with the Black Lives Matter, like don't mess up my business. We cool with black people, you know. Um, so that's definitely something that <laughs> yeah, and uh and that's why we've seen more, you know, with you know, even the $50 billion that corporations gave to, um, and as their promise after George Floyd, they gave 50 billion uh, last year. And we, we looked into it and in the, in the way it was broken down, I think less than 2% of that money went directly to kind of like grassroots, actual kind of people doing, everything else went to financial literacy training and buy a, you know, we're going to help you buy a home and we're going to help you start a business and we're going to, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, and we're going to, you know, hire people to, to, you know, I don't know, give presentations and you're going to, you know, you, you, whatever, that kind of stuff. Um, and then out of that comes like Netflix gave uh, they gave a hundred of that 50 billion, a hundred million was from Netflix that got sprinkled around. Um, and then Netflix, if you, if you saw like they, they, they hired Holly Berry, um, they made a deal with Holly Berry to produce some content and some other black and brown people to produce content. So you're going to get like some blacker Netflix, you and know, you can't and, criticize these things. Cause then you're seen as a hater. You're seen as somebody not really in for the struggle, you know, it's like. How are you going to hate on Halle Berry? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is something with the Obama, the Obamas too, with Netflix. Oh, honestly, I'm not sure. That, that, I, 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 I would hate to think that I missed that, but I, I, I may have. I'll have to look into that. I would hate to think that that, that, that one would be missed. I'm, I, but of course, I mean, that would have to be... <sighs> you know when they come off of their 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 you know what is it the the 40 million dollar 12 acre estate or whatever what is it 38 i don't know how that their martha vineyard estate you know they got to do something they got to have something to do uh so maybe they'll make some oh i don't know but i mean you know i saw the the you know i'm watching it now the netflix uh I, well i see it come out on youtube i don't know if it comes anywhere else but they're they're um bank black and black business series you know you know uh so i'm sure the the obamas being something like that you know like you know um if you all would have voted because if you all would have voted remember what michelle told you now if you all would have voted that's right you black people you black people specifically <laughs> that's what i'm talking to now if you black people because she was very clear it wasn't anybody else you all you got all. us donald trump messed up the whole Hillary thing and their whole legacy. You all did that. Rabble rousing, freedom loving, dreptomaniacs. <laughs> and that's the other thing where the where the the nation class gender analysis comes in because hey, there's a whole bunch of colonized people living in this country. Hmm. And it's like only black people and white people count and it's just it's hilarious mm. so the whole say you know community of filipino people don't count cambodian mm. people don't count people from laos don't count people from colombia don't count you know it's just nobody else counts and you know just the issue of colonized people and how this land is stolen it's like if you don't vote for biden if you didn't vote for Obama, that's what it comes down to this identity. Policy. On that, I might disagree with you a little bit though. Okay. Uh, like in terms of the Latin American community, because of the, what, how they're being defined and the, their collective size relative to black America. I think that they are, uh, um, that group is considered in ways for, for instance, maybe Cambodians and 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 even indigenous uh, folks and other segments might not be, um, but all of the, all the, all I mean by that at least is that that just means the system adjusts itself with a specific ramped up approach for them to do the same thing. 
to to astroturf all of their organizations, make sure that they don't even go as far as Bernie Sanders, much less left than that. Um, you know, and to and to hold out a lot of promises and do a lot of the same thing. Like, don't be siding up with these Negroes, you know, because you're now bigger than them. You're better than them. And, you know, we're not going to hold you back the way that they hold themselves back. So you, you know, you come here with that immigrant strength that these, you know, you know, these other ones don't have. Like, like the messaging is crazy. And the buying power thing that I've been looking at, like they, they, they've ramped that up too. Like, like when I started doing my research on it, I don't, I'm not. I, I haven't done uh, 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 the science on this per se, but I don't recall uh, Latin Americans getting targeted in this way with that same kind of messaging. That is, you all have an economic strength that you continue to not take advantage of because you aren't financially literate enough. Um, uh, but over the years, I've seen there's been an uptick in that messaging and in that 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 reporting and in that um, presentation being spread throughout the, that community. And it's all meant to drag them farther to the right, split them apart from even themselves, much less black people and whoever else. So that would be the only thing I, I would just, you know, like, I think that there with, with that group, because, you know, they, there's been this intentional desire to say, look, you all are now bigger by numbers than black people. So um, we can we need to start focusing on you a little bit more and differently. Um, and that's why they did that thing with the that one commercial they had the the they, the the CIA did that thing. Did you all see that one where they had they had that oh. Latina? And she was talking about how she, oh, yeah. she, she was yeah. an immigrant and right. her father came here and she, yeah. she was going to show her pride in her new country and her help her by becoming the first whatever CIA in her family, whatever, whatever. And it was like, holy shit. Like, yeah, I remember like that. That's, that was, yeah. that's hot. Like that's what, so so to me, that is the, the most, the, the, the one at least consistent message that I have had as it regards gender and sexuality over the years is just to say, whatever you need to do or any of us need to do to get through that doorway to political struggle, we have to go through. So some of us come through, I come through the mixed door, somebody comes through the Ghanaian door, somebody comes through the, the trans door, somebody comes through the, 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 L, the, the L, the G, the B, whatever on there, that spectrum. They, we all gotta go through a door. And we have to get our specific corrective measures taken care of. We need, we all need help. We all need to be treated better. We all need to be understood. But then we all got to get into this this struggle. And once there, we need a diff, we, The analysis can't just be about our individual identities, and has to be about something bigger. And that's where for me, AAPRP and scientific socialism and Pan Africanism and whatever becomes so important. And why that's always been intentionally my focus, uh, um, it may be to the to the detriment of my overall analysis. But but that is the 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 point for me that I don't want us to get stuck in our doorways, even as those doorways deserve to be acknowledged. I'm not saying you know let's all I don't see color and gender. I'm not saying them that kind of nonsense. I'm saying. We all, but that, but that door can't stop there though. We got to get into the struggle. It can't just, we, the whole thing can't be about me getting my, whatever I need taken care of, you know, and a, and a personal, you know, family or identity thing. Like we all have issues that need to be addressed. We, but, but, but at some point we have to get through that door, get into the collective struggle and start fighting. Um, so anyway, that's you know, and and the 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 enemy, so to speak, it, see, it sees that they're they're very clear. So that's why they're happy to say, you know, again, Jamie Dimon will take a knee. They'll have this, the Latina come into the CIA. They'll put the remember they did the remember they they, they the, the Navy posted that thing, the first all LGBTQ air attack crew or air rescue crew or whatever they had on the helicopter. Like the they took a picture on the flight deck, and it's like black and. And brown and white and Asian and, and L and the B and the G and whoever, whatever, I don't know who was supposed to be what, but they said the all whatever first one, the all rainbow. 
And it's like, that's what's up. They should all, we should all be together. And, but then you think, oh, but damn, they're about to get on this thing and go help somebody get bombed then killed and, ex and exploited. And ex <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so I'm sure, you know, whoever's at the other end of that mission is, is quite happy. This, oh, that's nice. There's a nice little rainbow on that attack helicopter. And there's a nice Black Lives Matter sign on the damn tank and you know the ied that or whatever whatever you know what i'm saying like i mean it's like so so they are clear on that they're saying we're going to help you walk through your door but you're going to be walking into this room you know we're going to walk you into this room so we do have to figure out a way of saying yes we want you to we everybody got to get healed every segment does have to get healed i'm not trying to but on our way into the struggle. Anyway, so. To, to that point, the, the follow-up question would be, as you mentioned, the woman. So what they still do in terms of that hierarchical structure is they say Black people and people from Latin America, and, Latin America, and you know, they don't include it when they're producing this narrative it's like Africans don't exist in those spaces. So it's just like, oh, there's a Latina, but uh, there are tons of Africans in those spaces. So, so they still do this, uh, this structure of division where it's like, well, you're not like them. You're not like those black people, but what about all the Africans in those communities? So they still do the same thing to your point. They still do that. And they also encourage segments in our communities to uh, see, see our struggle as being entirely separate from continental Africans, et cetera, and, and to in fact see the continental African immigrants as our enemy. Absolutely. So it's the exact opposite of what, what, what we're all involved in and trying to do. So, uh, but, but, uh, uh, but it is happening. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not, again, all of our identities and our identity formations are e incredibly important. And in fact, you know, I'm also part of a, a, a you know, a, 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 in a small, you know, marginal corner of the Black Studies community as well. And it's the same kind of, you know, Black Studies or Africana Studies has always been about a radical uh, uh, redefinition and reclamation of identity and, and uh, uh, personal and collective consciousness. So I'm for all of that. But at the same time, uh, you know, just like I just got into, you know, I, I, I put myself in, in some hot water with some of my comrades and loved ones, you know, by saying like, we have to get past some of the symbolism. So it can't just be about celebrating Kwanzaa or whatever else if there's no science in there, if there's no struggle in there. Um, Cause then anybody, because then, then Ujamaa and cooperative economics becomes black capitalism. Uh. So, so, so I watched that by the way. I love that segment. I shared it with a, a homie of mine. I thought that was well, I appreciate it because because <laughs> not everybody did. I'll put it that way. I'll just I'll put it that way. Uh um, and so people that you know very close to me, you know, like you know, that I, I really care about, they just don't agree with any of that. They don't they, and they don't they don't agree, you know. There's there's a lot of them are still on the whole thing of you know, socialism is white. And, and um, uh, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's that, <laughs> there's so many things yeah. I feel like we haven't advanced on in the years. Like, I don't, so anyway, I mean, so I appreciate that you said that. And, and but, uh, uh, um, cause like I said, not everybody agrees with you. <laughs> right, well, I understand that. Cause my friends are like, they, same kind of thing. Yeah, socialism is white, you know, it's not, yeah. But I mean, you know, and I really do think, and, I, and I'm going to continue to look for this. I have, you know, obviously this is one of the reasons why I love the AAPRP that, and, and, and that I, I have so much studying to do. But that, that piece that I, I, I referenced from Walter Rodney and his look at Ujamaa, I thought really did the work. I mean, that was, you know, like, I get it. You know, when Jared, you know, Jared's, I, like my ability to 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 break stuff down is is what it is but but rodney like he killed it so i'm like you you i would like to see somebody deal with really with what he said who doesn't agree like the people who are arguing with me i, I keep wanting to say well, well read the rodney piece and then tell me what he got wrong because i'm i might not be you know articulating it correctly 
I may not fully understand everything and I don't want, you know, I don't want to hold things up, but I think Roddy make, got it right. And when he, when he made the point about specifically that I keep coming back to that, that, that we can't look to African communalism and tradition, traditional African practices because not that they're not important, but they predate capitalism and the imposition of colonialism and imperialism. So they they can't, they're not fully adequate in terms of their response today to what, what we need in the response today must involve socialism, scientific socialism specifically. Uh, uh, that is what will make sure that the redistributionist collective concerns of traditional African values is updated appropriately in today's context and today's economic relationships. So when he made the whole point about the, the, the move from communalism to capitalism uh, and, then with, and then in an attempt to go from that to socialism, breaking that traditional pattern that Marx himself said was not necessary, he, he made the point about the, that the, the, the inequalities that we wanna get rid of replicate themselves in the uh, uh, agricultural productive spaces because they would have the preponderance of, they have the upper hand, so to speak, because they have, they have the land and, you know, and they're set up to produce. And, and if they produce and they become the hierarchy, and he's saying, if we just do a communalism thing, that, that situation won't be addressed in today's context because they still have, anyway. So I may not have that fully right, but to me, when I read that, I'm sitting there saying, man, I think this is, this, this, this is the synthesis that, we, that, that I, I, that I think we need to, to bring in the so-called cultural nationalists with the revolutionary nationalists to start to collapse that, to say that this isn't about white man and Marx and all this other stuff. It's to say, at this point, we need something that reflects this situation. Um, and this is the pathway to do it. So anyway, but I don't know, I keep working on it. You could also show them in Kuma and the writings there on socialism, how people look at socialism itself being different from African socialism. And he straight up said it was backwards. It's like socialism is socialism. <laughs> we need to just, Move. That's the yeah. thing. Even in Krumah, though, like I, I used to think in Krumah, much like I still think, you know, maybe with Rodney would be the figure to satisfy. But, but even there, you know, I had a, a debate with you know one of my favorite people in the world, who's a, who's truly an expert in Ghanaian history, but has a different. And his whole thing is in Krumah messed up by going to socialism, and ignoring the traditional collectives and communities, and this is the, and the that's. And I'm saying I don't know how. I mean, I don't get it. I don't get it. But the point is, if, and, you know, so sometimes I, per, that's why, I, that's why I want to be part of collectives and organizations, because I will sometimes personally feel like defeated in those moments. Like if, it, like I, it, if, if I can't get you to listen to Walter Rodney and Kwame Nkrumah, then, then I'm, I can't, then, then Jared is, then I'm useless. Like I'm, I, I, I can't do better than them. So if you're not going to read them or listen to me talk about them, <laughs> I'm literally right. speechless. That's fair. That's fair. Well, I mean, it's Amakal Cabral. This one's for none. But I mean, but that's the point, though. There's that, there's a point, and even with the brother I'm talking about, it's not that he hasn't read Nkrumah. He's his his position is just that Nkrumah was wrong. So so it 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 it, it that's a whole other level of struggle because I'm not dealing with somebody who hasn't done the reading. He's just done the reading with a very different conclusion and interpretation, and I. I and and I also think he's ref, he reflects a, a a a solid strong sentiment throughout our our communities here our diaspora here, um, and there's still a lot of you know there's still a lot of struggle. I mean, we got into it recently too. There's still a lot of struggle over the the idea that that Nkrumah married outside of the African community and married an Arab. I mean, you know, like I mean. It, yeah, these, I mean, right. I mean, these are heavy points in our community because people still talk about it like, yeah, th this makes me turn my eye. But that, to me, that's not scientific enough. That's that's sort of reactive uh, as opposed to really like analyzing it from a dialectical uh, framework. Just But it's funny because Nkrumah can't marry an Arab, but people don't have the same level of ire when when 
uh, uh, Serena Williams marries a white boy or whatever, or when yeah. Common dated the white girl. Like they may, they may be a little bit of, I don't know about that, or I don't know about oh, that, but there's not I've, the I've, level I've, of I've, dismissal. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? I've, I've heard some dismissal about Serena. What's his name? Yeah. Reddit co founder, right? Yeah. <laughs> But what I'm saying is that 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 that, that are there's a willingness, I think, because of celebrity and because of a detachment of the, because those people are not connected to radical politics. There's a willingness to accept that from them. But with Nkrumah, it's like, nah, you know, now, you know, because in other words, Serena isn't asking her. Her presence isn't asking people to challenge their ideological position. Uh, or mm. she's either easily dismissed, or they, or it just isn't a challenge to what, or 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 they're largely in agreement, polit politically. So so there's no need, you know. For instance, she upsets them, then maybe they'll start that. But that's because that's why you had the white name. But but with Nkrumah, you know, it's like I don't want to be a, I don't want socialism. I don't want guerrilla warfare. I don't want to confront the enemy. So I'm just gonna be like, that he married an Arab. So you know what I mean? You know, it just becomes it, it you know. Uh, so I know that that's part of it, uh, but I'm just, you know, it, 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 so it's any, it's, it's, it's all fascinating and frustrating. And again, why again, selfishly, I mean, it is on some level selfish that I wanted to join, be more active within an organization. If for no other reason, you know, uh, like Chuck D once said, mental self-defensive fitness. I mean, it's just, it's just, just, you know, well, no, need somewhere you? to go. But if, if people aren't listening to Nkrumah, if people are not listening to Amakar Cabral, if people are not listening to Walter Rodney, I would say an argument for socialism is you have your job that you hate. You have two kids that your mother watches. You have people in the community watch your kids. So you go to your job. Wouldn't it be better if everyone in that community own the means of production so you all understand where each other are at emotionally, uh, just in, in other ways, instead of you utilizing your labor for someone else to get rich off of, to get wealth, wouldn't it be better? I mean, I-, I So, but I, in that moment, <laughs> but in that moment that you, that's a win. And mm -hmm. in my experience, that person will almost always say, yeah, that sounds right. That sounds good. And then, it's, but then the question becomes, how do we get there? And then, of course, as soon as you walk away, the very next thing they click or turn on is, is, is somebody in one way or another telling them that the real answer isn't the lunatic radical you were just talking to. It's, you know, start a business, right. mine some Bitcoin, uh, you know, put your, you know, get some financial literacy. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, th that's the, the, tr th the mass amount of 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 the messaging, which is why ultimately why we have I keep coming back to the only real way we're going to to win is to find ways to work with those already on our team, so to speak, and to build to make it so that people, in a positive way, are sort of forced to confront what we're what we're arguing, uh, either through demonstration or 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 whatever else, but. But, you know, at this point, I am a little bit, I, not a little bit, I am pessimistic that even as much as I and we are engaged in this media struggle, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not convinced that this is, this is, I see myself as participating in what will encourage us to get to that organizational place where we can start to build what will be necessary to win. Um, I, at the moment, I don't see us as, as, as getting there. Uh, and there's, and for all of the good work we're all doing with the, in, in the media space, at least there's so much coming from, I mean, I just went down a rabbit hole. I was supposed to, I'm trying to do this research on cryptocurrency and I just got sent down a rabbit hole about, about, uh, because of a related issue, uh, of, of all of this, you know, several generations behind me, alpha male life coaching YouTube oh, yeah. battles. I had no idea. Yeah. In the last month, I had no, these people have millions of views. Millions of views. Kevin Samuels. Them, them, all of that. Yeah, all, all of, of yeah. them. A, mm -hmm. And the, what they are saying about women and what they're saying about men, like mm -hmm. I thought I was retrograde. 
like I thought I needed some updating. Goodness gracious. And these are people are like half my age and they're talking hours. They and these and you got young boys sending money to these people as you know heroes. That type of page copy. So I mean, like it, you know, like so I, I you know, I, I, my engagement is usually with, with in, just through my classes where where students introduce me to things like this or they exhibit some of of this in 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 our exchanges. But anyway, so I mean, it's it's very you know it's it's very humbling. And then you look at you know, obviously we don't mean to compete, but I think it's an, an accidental you know f maybe fact of nature. You look at your YouTube numbers, you're like, wait a minute. It's, it's just like I'm saying about JP Morgan. We're never going to catch up economically to these people. I'm never, we're never going to get the views these fools are getting. So, so anyway, we have to figure out how we're going to work with one another to magnify uh, and to, to build, to make that, to make that moot. However, that's going to happen. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, the Kevin said all these, I'm, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sitting here focused, you know, I put down the, the Seku Tere for my work study and I look up and this is what cats are listening to. No wonder when we walk into a space, they're like, what in the world are you talking about? Africans, socialism, pan, what? What? High value man. High value man. I'm trying to, I'm trying not to pay for the box. That phrase is now stuck in my head. I can't even, I can't, I'm sorry to have said it here, but I'm like, what? Wait a minute. Wait a, like, so seriously, I, I mean, it, it's crazy. Uh, um, uh, and all my students, like seriously, well, not all, but a good portion of my students, they know all of these folks, or at least, you know, like they're very up on all of this. Um, I, I I don't know. I, I mean, yeah. Anyway, I don't know how we. I didn't mean to take us all the way there, but but uh, it's it's it just shows how much work we have to do. That's really you know it's crazy. I think, I think the, the main thing is uh, like with, as as you see to any other like revolutionary, um, any what revolutionary movements that you have to show like you have to meet their needs. Like it, it's not like yeah you might convince people okay capitalism like there is a contradiction between infinite growth and planet resources or what more of a profit and so forth and you can tell them you can show them studies about uh socialist countries or versus capitalist countries and their health and welfare and and all this that's but at some point you have to say okay how, okay how's it going to benefit me like how like i see people like you see people you see people on the subway like, like they're asking for money or you see people who are in like five six digit debt or the or they're in, or they're getting rank of it and so forth like you have to yeah the show okay let's 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 okay like you need not convinced by all right okay i should, like we our group we got places for you yes we go live we got food for you we got where you can learn this stuff this, that's not outside of the whole oh the slaves are happy workers and stuff but you actually have to show them that he, that like like Gabriel said, like, like people are batting for like material things. They want they want their houses, they want food, they want this. And so you gotta make sure that or, or even like so like, and now it's not, like when he's talking about on practice and like, yes, like yes, theory like theory does influ influence uh but again, like we how do we get that theory from actually doing this stuff? So I think that's the main thing we got to we also got to remember. Yeah, sure. No, I, I, I agree. Makes It's a great point. Yeah. Sort of a question I had following up with what you were talking about. Popular culture, where do you see it going? Like, I obviously don't follow as much as you, but uh, I'm seeing you have a Sada and Donny Hathaway over in the corner. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite. That's that's like my fantasy, like my, my fantasy couple. Oh. Donnie Hathaway and Asada Shakur. Like that's, that's, you know, that's, in all seriousness, like Donnie Hathaway to me is, uh, um, like he is the, 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 the perfect complement to a perfect revolutionary. I mean, his, I think, I, I mean, he's just my favorite. That's my bias. So like that, 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 that expansive live double album is still to me the, the best 
piano, soul, arranging, vocal. It's just perfect. So anyway, I don't, yeah, anyway, and Asada is politically the the equivalent. You know, obviously, I'm, she's a human being. I'm sure she, there's a flaw here and there. She didn't do everything perfectly, but but to me, that is that's that's what a revolutionary is. You, you come out of the community, commit to the community, struggle at the highest levels. Uh, and and I know it's 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 um uh, it's not a romantic romanticized thing, but she um, uh, the, the the just the symbolism of her escape and her continued freedom uh, and what what looks like I mean she's you know she's already an, an, an elder she she'll she will you know at this point whenever she passes she will pass as an elder and that's I mean an incredible incredible feat you know. Uh, for somebody like that, you know, it's like, like John Horse is like one of, I mean, how many people historically <laughs> get to struggle at that level and then die at an old age and freedom on their porch? <laughs> you know, what it's like, not that many. Uh, so, you know, anyway, so anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, pop culture from here. I mean, I think we're, we're seeing it. It's, it's, um, uh, you know, uh, like my godfather says, to negate the negation. They need to negate what we're doing. We are the negation of what they're attempting and they need to negate us. And the, the way they're doing it, I think is really sophisticated. Again, you know, uh, I talk a lot about what Netflix does and stuff like that as an example, but uh, it's, it's, very, it's a very sophisticated representation of our struggle back to us in a way that is meant to, to, to discourage the levels of struggle we actually need to, to reach. So, uh, um, you know, we were just talking about like, you know, again, with Netflix, with, with don't look up, you know, this whole thing of, you know, this, 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 well, I think a very well done parody of, of, the, of, the, of climate and the political, the, well, the environment and the political climate. But it does a lot of the same thing. You still have a magic Negro character helping the white liberals transcend. You still have, you know, uh, white liberals producing a movie that encourages us to see, uh, uh, you know, the political apparatus that is causing the problem um, as people we're still supposed to vote for in real life. Like you all told us in real life, we still have to vote for most of these people that we still have to, you know, like we've, and now you're making fun of them destroying the planet. Like that's, you know, that's very white liberal of you. Like, you know, like, um, or we'll get the we'll get the Holly Berries, we'll get the Ava DuVernay's, we'll get the the you know uh, uh, Lee Daniels is supposed to be doing a remake of of the Spook that sat by the door for Netflix, filming up the road for me in Baltimore. Like what in the hell? I mean, how? I don't even know how I'm going to deal with that. I mean, you know. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, so not so. Holly Berry, so. And again, Herbie Hancock to do the soundtrack. <laughs> they might, uh, you know, I mean, look, I had, look, I had, a, I have a colleague that told me, you know, I had to, I had to go easy on people like Tyler Perry. Cause he said, he literally told me, he was speaking of Asada that he may one day make the, the biography of Asada. And I was like, man, I would, I would literally, I will literally. No, no, no. I, now he's, he was saying that as an, it's not set to be happening. I but know, he was saying just, like, right. like we should, and, and I'm, but I would live like that would, I would have to, you know, get the bail money. Cause I'm going to shut that down. I'm getting arrested. I'm going to be civil, nonviolent, civil disobedience, but, but Dr. Jared Ball, you get the headline ready. Morgan state professor gets arrested at Tyler Perry studios or whatever, Lee Daniel studios or whoever, like you can't, you can't do Medea and then do Asada. Like you can't, like, it's not, I will just have to, I'll just have to be the, what is it? I'll, it'll be my version of the Tiananmen Square video in front of the tanks. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I would, this production cannot happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, but like, that's where we are though. I mean, you know, even with the Fred Hampton movie, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I still think that that has caused a lot of problems, uh, you know, uh, in, in, again, you know, uh, uh, presenting radical histories in this way. Uh, but that's anyway, that's where I think see pop culture. It's going to get more intense in that way, uh, the, the, with the symbolic allusion to our struggle, but it will be presented in a very illusory way. So that's that's 
um, yeah, Lee Daniels spooks that by the door. That, that'll make people sit quietly for a few minutes <laughs> in almost no, any they, setting. <laughs> no, they're gonna they're gonna flip it around. I don't. It's like a Queen and Slim, or it's like a lot of those movies where they try to pass it off as revolutionary, but in the end, we see what happens. I feel like they're gonna flip the script, where you know something that they green greenlit happens. I don't think it's gonna be the same. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not there, but I feel like they're gonna switch the plot around a little bit. Now, see, and, I, and I'm glad you mentioned that movie because that was that's one of where uh, again one of, my, one of my contradictions. When I walked out of the Queen, I, you know, I saw Queen and Slim in the theater, and when I walked out, I felt like emotionally moved in a way I'm not used to feeling. And I think, you know, to your point, yes, it ends that way. It is definitely not a perfect movie, but even the the, the this for me that that's that's I'm a sucker for it any you know any positive display of revolutionary violence it, it it i'm a sucker for it so so but but to your point i mean that's the problem like if if they're even going to get me you know uh like we're all in trouble that's what i mean like i'm the most like like nobody goes into a commercial media you know viewing more ready to hate than me i i do feel that way like no i'm like i'm at the you got to work to get me not to hate. And if I walked out feeling like, whoa. And I, and I just kept thinking, what if the movie had started, if, these, if this brother and sister were leaving, not a first date, but an organizational meeting? Like that, so I know the movie didn't do that, but I kept thinking, what if that, like if you even, if that one story point shift would have made even the rest of what they did, you know, but I still was, but hey, my, my point is they, they, they're they going to give us sprinklings of what even they know people like me want. And uh, uh, we have to be vigilant because it's not what we need. It's definitely not what we need, you know. Well, what did the character, was it Candy in uh, Django and Chain say? Oh, we did all this stuff to you and what are y'all gonna do? Nothing, so. That's exactly what Hollywood's giving you. It's like, we're going to give you some revolutionaries. We're going to give you this. We're going to give you spook who sat by the door, but we know you're not going to organize. So we'll just keep giving it to you and have the illusion of freedom. They're going to keep doing it. Makes and sense to me. To call the action to organize, really. Because, I mean, if we're going to just consume what they give us and we're not going to actually deal with the material reality and organize together to conquer it, we're going to be in the same situation. Like, that call to action is... You know, once you have that conscious awakening, it, it, it creates that urgency and need for it. Yeah, definitely. And I think uh, um, uh, it, it's, it's definitely as needed now as ever, that is organization. Um, and, and that's, again, why I think even on that level, there's an attempt to rebrand and redefine what that means. Um, so like Daruba, you know, uh, Ben Wahad was saying in, in, in one of my favorite, well, all of his interviews are one of my favorite, but I remember him saying, you know, BLM means Black Liberation Movement. And we have to remember that it's, you know, uh, and I think that even that little rebranding that has occurred in this last generation is serious. I mean, I, you know, that we would even have to make that distinction at this point. Uh, or to, you know, that he would have to feel feel a need to say that. I mean, because who would have ever thought anything different up until about a generation, this last generation? And that, I think, is pretty powerful, uh, you know, beyond whatever other differences there are. But, you know, just the simple, um, yeah. So uh, uh, if, if um, I mean, I even remember back before he got his first election, I remember... <clears throat> Wow, and I can't, it's, it's crazy they're both gone now, but the uh, following the lead of um, Bruce Dixon and Glenn Ford at Black Agenda Report, you know, Obama was calling himself a community activist. So that was a big part of his PR campaign. And we, you know, I remember again asking them, well, if that's a community activist, then I mean, the same thing, the, the one time I did my, again, I, I probably brought this up before, the one time I had my, my, my brush with, with, the, with the beehive, 
And I, when I posted that picture that if, 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 if Beyonce is a revolutionary, then what is the side of Shakur? And, and, you know, like, and, and I, I, I was not ready. I'm not gonna lie. I was well, not ready. Did you have to change your number and your address? Yeah, like... basically, basically, <laughs> like, ba- like seriously, like it was crazy. Yeah. I had, I really, I really had no idea. I, I really thought I'm not a big name. I'm not. I don't have that much of a following. I'm a. It's not gonna. You know. I, I never for a second thought I was gonna get what I got, and and I got a lot, and it was it was like wow. I get it. I get it. But but. Uh, um, uh, but still, I mean, I, the, the point remains, like, or the question remains, you know, if that that's what's happening. So, yeah, we have to organize, but we also have to fight for the redefinition of what that means. Uh, and even then, even again, at, at, a, at a level that that even our favorites never had to deal with, like Kwame Ture never deal with a pandemic. You know, like, you know, like, th- like, this is all this is a new twist. Um. So, so yeah, anyway, it's not, you know, we don't have it any easier for sure, but uh, the, the necessity is still the same. Yeah, even how they're addressing people quitting their jobs in mass and saying it's a worker shortage. It's definitely not a shortage of workers. It's a, a shortage in how you value people. And, you know, that's nothing new. But then now they're going on with this great reset. So it's sort of like, it's a reset of the system, but you know how capitalism does sort of twisting socialistic values to their favor and now they're saying great reset. And so it's just like, okay, people are quitting their jobs. Like how can we benefit this? So going back to AI, going back to uh, self checkouts, going to all of this stuff where uh, you know, machines are going to be something that we just look at as natural and uh, you know, drones will deliver your your items or, you know, with uh, like even with uh, taxi drivers, you're know, unionizing and all this where people are like, okay, you know, obviously we are not seen of people as value and they're mechanizing everything. So yeah, they're saying like how, again, how can we benefit? How can we profit off of this? How can we profit off of AI? How can uh, you know we profit off of people quitting? <laughs> yeah, so and, and you well, said it right people. there. I mean, the 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 cab drivers want to unionize. Uber and Lyft drivers want to be considered employees and not contractors. Right. Even that's a fight. And uh uh and and the 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 rulers of the world are saying in a few years we don't care because it's not going to be people driving these cars anyway. So. You know, uh, you know, go ahead. You know, uh, you know, Starbucks employees. You want to unionize? Fine, because in a few years you ain't gonna be making this coffee. You, right. <laughs> you, you're not gonna be handed. The, 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 the barista is gonna be, you know, bury the machine or whatever. But bury, you know, the barista, bury the machine or whatever. Bury the barista. Like, yeah. Bury the barista. <laughs> so like that, like, it's, and then, and then for, for many of us who have had enough of a sprinkling of a so-called middle-class existence who have been pushed into our virtual corners, we're not even going to see it, you know, unless, you know, unless we go to Starbucks and then realize, oh, that's the robotic arm sticking out through the drive through And it's like, wow, you know, hello, Mr. Jared, here's your latte. And you're like, oh, snap. Uh, right. you know, uh, and, and, you know, and that driverless car comes to pick you up when you, you know, get out the airport at, the, at the, your new destination. You're like, whoa. Uh, and you won't even see, they'll drive you right past the, the shanty towns and the homeless, you know, camps and the, you know, uh, and the few people that break the line, they'll be like, oh, there's the lunatic, the radicals, you know, they're, they, you know, we just have another robot sweep them off the street. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. They have those robot dogs out there. Right? That's right. right. And that's why I, you know, I, it's interesting now that we're talking about it, I, I hadn't really verbalized it or, or, or figured it out, but I mean, maybe that was the problem that I had, you know, part of the problem I had with, 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 uh, this last matrix, you know, like, like the robots are, you know, it was like this, 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 this false integration with, with some of the robots, 
who are now working with the rebels. You know, it's like, is is that, and, and something's rung both very true and accurate about that and also kind of spooky. Like uh, uh, we, 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 we who would see the matrix and want to see the matrix as millions of people did for whatever, for obviously not the same reason, but looking for some revolutionary content are now being encouraged to see the partnership with their replacements. You know, again, cause Jada Pinkett's character is saying, I don't want to go rescue any more humans. We got nice partners with these new robots. So even the leader of the revolution is saying, AI ain't so bad. And AI in some cases is better than the people. I don't even want to free anymore. They're, 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 they're going to sell us out. Oh. This robot's not going to sell me out. So I was looking at that like, mm, I don't know, man. Some of the, many things about that movie that bothered me, that was one of them. And I'm just, you know, like, mm, and now that we're having this conversation, it bothers me even more. Yeah, that's a, I'm still chewing on that. Cause I saw the matrix and I had similar thoughts. I mean, without going into that, but yeah, that's, that's a whole new, a whole new, new spiral. But it is true that, you know, like part of it is, you know, uh, part of it is that, 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 you know, at least for me, that is, is the, you know, this, the still, you know, inner child, geeky, nerdy, I want to see these movies and all of that. But the other part of it is that I do uh, believe, and I think the historical record is, is pretty clear on this, that pop culture is meant to pave the way for certain realities that are either here now or soon to come. Like they, that there is, is um, an intent behind, you know, so even as they, you know, not to keep focus on this one movie, but even as there are arguments and debates around the, the, uh, the, the one of the now uh, 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 sisters that stayed on the project, cause the other one didn't, one of the Wykowski Wyko sisters left and said, I didn't want to make another one. The corporations are making us make another one because they said they're going to make a Matrix 4 anyway, whether we're involved or not. Uh, it's, I don't want to be pressured like that. The other one, from what I understand, was more like, well, if they're going to do it anyway, I might as well be involved and help it. And, and, and within that, they put all of these messages in the script that reflect that struggle. So my point is, if on that level, there's a consciousness around, we're trying to put messages in here to tell people what Warner Brothers was doing to us to make this movie. You know, uh, you know that's why there are all these jokes about the, you right. know, the Matrix and all this. Other, you know, that's done intentionally. So the same thing I think could be said f in other areas as well. You know, we want to set the tone for how people are going to engage with this new technology because it's here, it's going to be here. You're going to have some advanced robot certainly in your lifetimes, there's going to be some advanced robot that you're going, you're already doing it by the phone and all that, but there's going to be something in our lives. You're going to walk in and it's going to be like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be looking at you like, it looks like you might've had a bad day, but you know, you, you uh, sleep six hours less than yesterday. Like, you know, like your temperature is off. Like, could it be because of this? Yeah. And, and, you know, what are we going to do about that? I mean, you know, uh, so people are talking about they got the 90 year old Walmart greeter and that's a bad thing. You know, elders shouldn't have to work, you know, doing that, but pretty soon it's gonna be a, they're not even gonna have that as a job. It's gonna be Barry the barista. <laughs> right. <laughs> Welcome to Walmart, to here's your latte. <laughs> yeah. I saw this one uh, video of this robot that was pushing somebody's hand away. So they were trying to test to see what the response from the robot would be. And so the human was putting uh, their hand in the robot's face. The robot's like, so I'm like, that is here. Yeah. <laughs> They're like that robots are get away from. No, me. they they have though they they have seen at least I don't know I, I guess it could be fake I don't know but they, I've seen some of the the military promo videos that that show like some like the attack dogs and some very advanced robots that can fire machine weapons, uh, machine guns, uh, and identify threats versus non threats. We hope. Uh, you know what I mean? And, and or though we I mean then again we're all going to be threats anyway. So I mean but. Uh, uh, I, I, it's, 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 it's very, 
and, you know, and any, and, and I think it's pretty clear at this point, any illusions that all this advanced technology is just gonna make it easier and better for us humans is that's, that's got to be seen as fantasy at this point. Um, you know, it should be. I mean, you would think on some level it should work that way, that if you lose your job to a robot, it should be so that you could chill, not so that you can't eat. You know right. what I mean? Like, like, but but that's what that's what it's gonna be. And um I you know, just to <laughs> last just to bring it back, like I don't see anything just coming back through this work study process in the AAPRP uh is is a great reminder that none of these analyses are out of place today some of the language may need to be updated but uh whether they're going to the moon or to mars or whatever all of these analyses uh uh are applicable uh, so absolutely absolutely and uh to the other point was it uh that Grimes is that Elon Musk partner, also yeah. musician Grimes, but made some posts about exactly what you said that we need AI so then we can all just relax. Like that's your partner is not looking at AI like that. Just say it. <laughs> first of all, Elon Musk is a hustler. Like people need right. to be clear about that. Like he didn't invent none of this stuff. Like he's the perfect example of all of this. He didn't invent Tesla. He didn't invent what was it, Reddit or whatever he was claiming credit. He didn't invent none of this stuff. Like he didn't, he, he, you know, he comes in late, puts his name on it, finagles it away from his original partners and takes credit for it. So he, like he's the perfect, and then people, and then he's running around here telling people you don't need college and you don't need to be, ed you know, I mean, one of my students this year, I mean, she said, uh, I don't need this class. I can learn everything I need to learn that I can learn in here on Twitter. And, and, and I, and I, you know, I, never mind the personal offense, you know, like, like I have nothing to offer beyond Twitter, but never mind that is, is that I think that she, I take that as, a, you know, she's, she's responding to this encouraged moment where, you know, uh, uh, you know, Elon Musk and everybody is, is are, are presenting fantasies of the world that even a young black woman from Baltimore would believe is hers. And, and I'm saying, you know, you know, more power to you. I mean, cause Elon is not thinking about you. And to just <laughs> ignore historical realities based on, I mean, they've been talking about hood communists that what's the problem with uh, focusing on lived experiences because there are actual material realities and historical realities that have existed. And when people talk about Cuba, for instance, well, I have a I have a person I went to college with that you know is uh, from Vietnam or from Cuba or whatever. And it's like, okay, where do they politically lie, and what are their class interests? Those are the two questions you need to be asking them. And especially if they come here for freedom, like what exactly does that mean? What is the family structure? What were their family's interests? Those are questions you need to be asking of that person who's telling you that, because. No person in Cuba right now is wearing a Make America Great hat. I'm just saying. So for you to say, oh, well, my cousin, uh, you know, went to Cuba and saw that. No, they didn't. So ask some questions before you believe that and come to me with it, because I can give you <laughs> some historical analysis. So those are the other things. And, you know, saying that, well, I can just learn everything on Twitter. It's just like, OK, but. Uh, how can you learn with 140 characters? You tell me, like, if, if you find a way to do it, let me know. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, part of it is, so, so, but part of the way I take that at least is that she's, well, one, it's, it's she's putting assumptions on what, what can be learned in, in any class or in my class. But she's also saying, I, at least as I interpret it, I don't need to learn beyond what is learnable on Twitter. It's almost as if what the world that or the universe that exists beyond Twitter isn't important um, because it's not Twitter. It's not, not on Twitter or it's not the focus of Twitter. Uh, so, you know, and, and, and again, I'm just saying that there is, you know, you know I'm, I'm using that as a, as a hyper example in the same way I'm using the Elon Musk thing as a hyper example of the, the, the move we're in. 
I mean, I did read, you know, a few years ago, actually, that there was a movement among venture capitalists to say, we don't want to hire people coming out of Harvard. We want to find people with a certain aptitude coming out of high school and just fund them to skip Harvard. Like, you don't need Harvard anymore. That was the, their argument. You know, uh, you know, I'll train you through your work and experience with me, and I'll fund that. Uh, and turn you into what can work for me and maybe succeed me in what I'm doing. And you don't need Harvard. You'll make all the money and get all the training, at least in this area that you need. Um, so, so there is this, this ethic that I think, you know, my student is, is responding to that's being encouraged to say, if I can get picked and selected, and again, I'm going back to, now I'm going back to the matrix again in my head. And if I can get one of those machines to come through and scoop me out of my battery pod and put me in, you know, their elite uh, uh, corporate board training program that pays me six figures to train with them instead of me paying six figures to go to Harvard. And at the other end of this training, I'm, a guar I'm guaranteed a spot in their hedge fund that's why I went to, would have gone to Harvard in the first place. Why, why would I, you know, uh, and, and I want that. So I'll go to this little Morgan state class and listen to Dr. Ball for a few weeks. Cause you know, until I wait until somebody scoops me up and I can, you know, and I can, <laughs> and, and get out of here. Um, but, uh, 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 anyway, um, yeah. It's, it's like a another, technological yeah. company store in a way. Yeah. A company city, yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, I mean, that's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Any last comments? What your thoughts have been over the year? Some pivotal things you've learned in organizing or um, an expansion of your organizational horizons? Like, what? are some tools that you can give people in joining organizations? I mean, I don't know. I don't know uh, if, if, I mean, really what this year has just taught me again is the, is the base sort of the, the, the it has reminded me that the, the previous cliches that I've been working under about the importance of organization are all true. Uh, and, um, you know, it, it, it can have, uh, as I've already said, it can have a very personal and selfish role to play and just helping, you know, work with other people to manage the daily grind of, of dealing with this barrage of nonsense and trying to make sense of it. But it's also obviously what we have to have if we're going to get out of this. And um, uh, so, yeah, if anything, this this year has just showed me that, that we need to be more committed to it. I need to be more committed to it. Uh, and that the struggle is only going to intensify. Um, Especially like, you know, I think it's economist Michael Hudson said that February is going to be the next bubble bursting in terms of uh, uh, homelessness and debt. Um, so it's about to get a lot worse here in the United States, at least, and, and, and I'm sure elsewhere. And, uh, um, and it's also going to get worse in terms of the, the analyses we're encouraged to adopt. So we really have to be, you know, again, recommitted to, to the work we're, we're signed up here to do. Absolutely. And we have comrades doing this work. There's Black Power Media. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We have our comrades in the Tiwa Territory slash New Mexico chapter who are doing their podcast. Comrade Anya Samu right now is in Cuba with the Venceremos Brigade. We have our ancestors' voices and they have been going for over a year if I'm not mistaken. We have uh, Revolutionary African Women and we have the Forward Ever podcast. So how can people contact you? Where can they find Black Power Media? Uh, what are some things to look for? Well, I mean, personally, I'm, everything is uh, uh, at I Mix What I Like. Um, and, and I think, and I would really want to invite people to uh, check out blackpowermedia.org for all of the, the work that, that I and my colleagues there are doing. Um, and, uh, and one of the things that we're committed to is expanding as well. So, I mean, we need to build more with you and the others in the AP or AAPRP and other areas, you know, similar formations that are doing this kind of work, um, you know, to help 
expand our echo chamber a little bit. Uh, so yeah, but blackpowermedia.org. And for me, it's at I Mix What I Like and all your relevant social media. Awesome. Thank you so much, Comrade Jared, for being here. Thank you all very much. Celebrating with us, or, you know, kind of. And congratulations. <laughs> and again, I'm terribly sorry to hear what you've overcome personally. I'm, I, and that I missed that. I'm, I'm, I feel terrible. So, you know, congratulations on that and, and, and best of luck going forward there as well. And congratulations on, on, on you know, the year, you know, to all of you. Thank you very much. much. Love and respect. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, me. indeed. Bye. Yes, indeed. Anytime. Peace, everybody. Oh, Thank you. Forward, Forward ever, backwards, Forward. never. Forward, Forward ever, backwards, never. That's it. <laughs>